in our seminary at this uh, gospel on this day in preparation now for, for Holy Week, uh, Father Paul, the founder of my community, uh, he has a bottle of this stuff that we hear mentioned in, in our gospel, nard oil. I, we don't really have it. Uh, but I, I don't think, I don't, I'm not even sure if you can buy it. it uh, I don't, Duns don't have it anyway. Uh, but it's, it's, it's very rare stuff. Anyway, so he has a little bottle of it. And normally at the beginning of the homily, he gets a normal little tissue, so one of the normal Kleenexes, puts a drop, one drop on it. And our chapel is round about the same size as this. It's, yeah, it's, yeah, round about the same size. And the one drop, it's like, it's like, it's like Granny going to Sunday Mass. You know when Granny goes and she douses the stuff on? Like it's, it's, it's pretty potent. It's like traveling in the car on the way to Mass with Granny. Uh, it's a really, really strong, it's like, I think musk is a smell, isn't it? Musk, I think I've heard of that. Yeah, it's along the musky direction. Uh, but it's, it's, it's a nice smell. It's, but it's, like I said, one, when you have the pure stuff, one drop, you'd smell it in every orifice, in every corner of this chapel. You, wouldn't, you couldn't escape it. And if you open the doors, you'd smell it halfway. You'd probably, you'd probably smell, it, smell it the whole way to the kitchen. One drop of this stuff, okay? So you didn't need much, okay? It, it, one drop went an awful long way. I mean, I'm not sure how you sold it. Maybe you mixed it with olive oil or something and then just put a drop in a drop or something. Uh, but it, it, one, one little drop of this goes an awful long way. So, uh, hence it's, it's quite expensive. So Judas, who knew the price of everything, and the value of nothing, uh, sees this ointment in his eyes being wasted. Now, 300 denarii, remember, denarius is what? Day's wages. 300 denarius is almost a year's wages, the best part of a year's wages. So in or around, could be up to 40, 45,000 euro. It's not, it's a, this, stuff is, this stuff is very, very expensive. And she has a pound of it. So remember, if, if you can mix one drop with... I don't know, maybe uh, half a litre of olive oil or something, and, and it's still being absolutely perfect, a, a pound of the stuff. Uh, that's, a, that's a pretty potent mix. So she's just absolutely emptying it out in a way that looks wasteful. In a way that looks wasteful to, as I say, our dear uh, Judas, who knows the price of everything and the value of nothing. He's witnessing something that he doesn't fully understand. He doesn't get what's going on. Because this, this is more than just a simple foot washing, or this is more than a simple perfuming of, of, of someone's feet. There's something, like, what, what do these actions mean? Because most of our actions have, have a motivation behind them, have a purpose behind them. What is she doing? She is emptying and pouring out her love on Jesus. So the, the, the narrative, it's a, it's a symbol of, of, of love. So then this, this love then, the, whole, the fragrance, as I say, it fills the whole house that they were in. You know, when there's love there, you, know, it's, you can often feel it in a family, in a family where there's love. How it might be a small, pokey little house, and you bend your head on the way in, and there's this small little family, and they're just beaming with joy, and they're, hello, Father, you're very welcome, cup of tea, Father. Like and everyone is just happy. And it's like you, you can almost kind of sense it in the house. There's, there's, there's love here. There's love here. And it doesn't matter if they have the, the, the latest floor tiles or laminate flooring or what car is at the front and what pool is at the back. It, it just doesn't matter. You have this, this, this sense of love. There's, you can just almost perceive it in there. So this is what's happening here. There's love being poured out on the Lord. Now the Lord, again, know, he, know, he knows the value of this stuff as well. So when Judas objects, the money could have been given to the poor. Leave her alone. She had to keep this scent for the day of my burial. All right, so like we see a, a, a beautiful outpouring of love and in, in the midst of this, this loving environment, you know, Jesus with his friends, with people he cared about, with Lazarus who he wept over when, when he heard Lazarus died. And how he's with his friends, it's, you know, something, maybe certain modern movies, maybe like The Chosen, that help us to, Imagine in some way what Jesus was like with his friends. What, what was it? I mean, what did they talk about? You know, uh, it, it's, it's interesting to kind of reflect on how Jesus would have been. So he's just really reclining and eating with his friends. 
So they would have asked him things and he would have answered and they would have laughed and told stories about different things. You know, maybe much more normal than we might realize. But without in any way straying from, from, from being the God man, you know, he, he still loves and cares for and laughs and, and, and can heal and can advise and is so profound. He was never, you know, never, never ridiculous or, or, or slanderous jokes or never belittling people, but still could be funny, I would imagine. So he's there enjoying this time with, with his friends and if it's Mary Magdalene who's anointing his feet, there, there are different opinions as to which Mary it was, but if it's her, this, this lady who, who was a sinner is now pouring out her love. And Jesus keeps this in mind as he's remembering the fact that in a short while he will be killed. So it's 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 a beautiful it's a beautiful scene. It's a scene where I think possibly we can imagine all of ourselves uh, at Jesus' feet, pouring out the the oil of love, the love that we have. Maybe in tears, maybe in sadness over over our past mistakes or the things that we've our shortcomings how, how we haven't achieved maybe what we feel we should have or what we feel the Lord is calling us to and the Lord accepts this love and I, I could just imagine like you know when you're, if your head is down going Lord oh I'm after making a, such a mess of things I just I wish I was I wish I could pray better or I wish I didn't give in to my temper so easily or, or I wish I could be a better husband or a better wife, better father, better, better priest. I'm sorry for just, uh, just giving in so easily and so quickly to my weak self. And he says, leave her alone. Leave him alone. She had to keep the scent for the day of my burial. You will have the poor with you always. You will not always have me. It's like another way of saying, I'm with you. I'm here. I was talking to someone during the week and they asked a question I've, I've heard before, but I, it just really struck me, just with the way, the way she asked. She said, you know, is it, not, is it not true, though, that if we go through a lot of suffering here on, on the earth and we've, kind of our, we've got our, our suffering done, that then... We can go to heaven. And I said, hold on, hold on a sec. Do you think that we just have to kind of, you know, suffer a certain amount and then God will let us into heaven? And she said, well, yeah, that's, that's what people say, isn't it? And I thought, well, actually, yeah, it's true. It's, it's unfortunately true. That, that is exactly what people say. You know, if someone has a, a sickness or passes away after cancer, oh, she's her, she's her suffering done. But there's a real problem with saying this, you imagine as a family father, a family mother, you know, you've got your son or daughter outside and they're playing with the neighbor's Rottweiler, you know, and, and the, the dog attacks him and you say, well, look, he's just getting his little bit of suffering. He'll be okay. <laughs> you know, or the child is freezing or the child falls and cuts its knee and you're saying, the little bit of suffering. Now, that would be absolutely horrific parenting. Why do we think God would do this? Why do you think that God wants us to suffer a bit? We leave, let him suffer a little outside, and then we'll eventually let them into the house. Leave him suffer, hold on, hold on. Leave him suffer, and we'll go out in three, two. Okay, we'll go out now. You know, I mean, it just, you wouldn't do that, okay? So we must be very, very careful to understand this. Okay? Suffering on its own is a consequence of the fall. Suffering on its own is an evil. People in hell suffer and does them no good whatsoever. So suffering on its own is useless. Okay? Suffering is useless. It, on its own, it's a bad thing. The difference is, from our, our Christian or our Catholic perspective, is that God transforms suffering by loving amidst suffering by loving while suffering. 
So now suffering doesn't such win. I may be, uh, I may have some illness. Uh, things may have not gone well. I may be accused innocently as, as the Lord is, or as a priest up the country now, you know, being fined and uh, the, the eyes of the media from the whole nation looking at him to see will he celebrate another mass and all this kind of thing. So we may suffer for, for the truth, but we suffer with love. Or at least this is our call to suffer with love. And so then our, our suffering takes on a value, a meaning. The high point of love isn't, isn't intimacy, physical intimacy. The high point of love is self-sacrifice. The high point of love is self-gift, which physical intimacy is supposed to as such foreshadow or, or represent. It's, it's the gift of self. The high point of love is self-gift, self-sacrifice, which is suffering. Another, but but it's, like, it's like the kind of suffering that parents go through, as an example I use a million times, having to get up at night repeatedly uh, to, to change nappies and feed newborns and all of that. It's a suffering, but they don't necessarily even kind of recognize, I mean, they are tired and the hair is all over the shop, but, like, but it's a kind of suffering that they, they wouldn't have it any other way because I want my child to be fed and warm and happy and content. And so suffering out of love deepens love and it's the love that counts. It's the love that counts. So it's not that we have to have a certain amount of... Uh, a certain degree or a certain amount of years or time of suffering done and then such we please God. That makes no sense whatsoever. What kind of a father would he be to leave us suffer pointlessly and meaninglessly and then help us after we've suffered for a bit? That makes no sense whatsoever. In order to get us into heaven, it's not that we have to suffer. In order to get us into heaven, Christ suffers. Jesus suffers to get us into heaven, not us. We just have to receive everything that he's offering. We don't get into heaven because we've suffered. We get into heaven because he's suffered. he has suffered. So we don't save ourselves through our suffering. And suffering on its own is useless. But if in my suffering, if in my debilitated state, for whatever reason, old age or, or illness or separation or hurt or what all these things that, that, that can happen, if in this state I call out to the Lord, my Savior, I call out to my Father, now in my suffering, I'm learning to love. I'm learning to rely on God, the source of all grace, the source of all joy, the source of all healing, the source of my salvation. So suffering on its own is useless. But suffering carried out of love can help us get into heaven. But ultimately, the greatest suffering was carried by the Lord himself out of love for us. And that's what we celebrate this week. That's what we're, we're preparing with this kind of a, a gospel today from St. John. This outpouring of love. And that's what we meditate also in the devotion to the divine mercy. The blood and water pouring forth. So as, as, as this ointment was poured upon Jesus' feet. So Jesus pours himself in an act of love upon all of humanity the blood which gives us life and the water which washes us clean. So these are very, very beautiful gospels, very beautiful meditations to prepare our hearts for the dramatic events of Holy Thursday, Good Friday and the Easter Vigil. You have been infinitely loved by the Lord Jesus who is willing to die on a cross for you. That's what you're worth. Lord, may you open our hearts to receive all the graces you offer us in this holy week. Amen.